What's up, swim fans? In this video, I'm gonna share with you the five biggest mistakes that swimmers make in breaststroke. Now, whether you're a veteran swimmer or a beginner and you're just getting started, I guarantee you're gonna learn something in this video. And make sure you watch until the very end because I'm gonna share my favorite breaststroke set that incorporates all the things that we're gonna talk about. Now, if you guys are new here, welcome to my Swim Pro where we share the latest and greatest to help you improve your performance and health both in and out of the water. So if you wanna take your swimming to the next level, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let me know in the comments what your breaststroke is all about. Any of these mistakes common for you? Let me know down in the comments. Now let's go ahead and get started here. The first mistake is the timing. This is really the most important thing with breaststroke. I was just working with a swimmer today, this morning, on this specific drill. It's the concept of timing. When you swim breaststroke, you need to have pull, kick, glide. You need to repeat that in your head. Doesn't matter how fast you are, it's pull, kick, glide. Now the big mistake that a lot of swimmers make is not the order in which they do that, it's the timing of when you pause. Oftentimes, swimmers will pause when they're breathing. And you don't wanna pause when you breathe because when you take the breath and your body is up high and your legs start to sink, that is the slowest point of the entire stroke cycle. So if you stop there, you're basically coming to a halt and then you re-begin the next stroke cycle and then you get a nice jolt forward and then you stop because you take a breath. Instead, the longest part of the stroke is when you're in streamline. So I want you to think in your head, the next time you go swimming, it's pull, kick, glide. And you take the breath when you do the pull. We'll talk about that in just a second. So I want you to think, when you swim breaststroke, pull, kick, glide. Do not pause when you take the breath when you're pulling. It's a continuous motion, boom. Hit the streamline, hold the streamline. And if you want to exaggerate this, you can go ahead and hold for two full seconds in streamline, really glide and leverage your kick before initiating the next stroke cycle. Now here's an actual drill that you can apply for this. It's two kicks, one pull. If you've been swimming a while, you've probably done this a number of times. You do two kicks in the streamline position and then you take one full arm stroke on top of the water and then you go back down under. Make sure you don't dive down too much. We'll talk about amplitude of the stroke and the next uh, mistake that a lot of swimmers make. But you want to make sure you're focusing on gliding in streamline. That is mistake number one. Mistake number two is having too wide of a kick. Now you might be thinking, well I wanna have a bigger kick so I can have more power. The wider your legs go, the more water you're gonna grab like a frog. That's not exactly true. So you might be able to pull more water, but by having a wider kick, you're actually going to increase the amount of resistance that your legs have. So you don't wanna actually kick like a frog, uh, although if you could swim like a frog, props on you, but you wanna have a narrow kick so that way your knees and your legs stay within your body line. So the widest part of your body is your shoulders and your chest. And so your knees should never really go that much wider than your shoulders, the width of your shoulders. Now, of course, your heels and your feet will stick out. So if you're thinking about the kick, it's up, out, around, and together. You bring your heels together, but the widest point should be narrower than your body line. Now here's a great drill to focus on this. It's called slob, streamline on back. This is where you kick breaststroke on your back. So you can be in streamline, you can have your hands underneath your bum, but when you kick on your back on the surface of the water, you've gotta make sure that your knees stay underneath the surface of the water. And you wanna have like a straight line from your knees through your hips and then up through your shoulders. And really focus on bringing your heels back underneath the surface of the water. Whether you're an experienced swimmer or a noob and you're just getting started, this is something that you should do all the time. Don't kick breaststroke with a kickboard. Instead, kick streamline on your back and really focus on keeping your knees narrow underneath the surface of the water and bring your heels all the way back to your bum and you'll be swimming breaststroke way faster because the kick in breaststroke is a majority of the power of the stroke. If you have a magnificent kick in breaststroke, you're gonna be pretty fast. If you have a magnificent pull and a terrible kick, that's gonna hold you back and you're never gonna be that good at breaststroke until you can nail the kick. So really focus on kicking on your back. So don't have too wide of a kick. Now mistake number three is the amplitude of the overall stroke. So if I, if I had a marker and I drew like a sine curve on the board, right? Visualize a wave. When you swim breaststroke, if that wave is too tall, meaning the amplitude is too, is too wide, that's not good because what goes up must come down. We already talked about breaststroke being the slowest and most inefficient stroke. So anytime you're out of the water and you're getting a breath, if you go too high, 
that means your legs are going to sink. Now you may have seen some of the best swimmers in the world. It looks like their whole body is out of the water. And that might be true, but they're also probably moving really, really fast and their upper body is out of the water for a split second while they're taking the breath. And then they lunge forward to get to streamline as quickly as possible. So you're really not out of the water that long because if you are above the water and you're too high and you have too big of an amplitude, your legs are just gonna sink like a rock and you're barely gonna go anywhere. We don't wanna sink like a rock. We wanna swim on top of the water. There's actually two versions of where this is a big mistake. So you come out of the water too high when you take the breath. So if you come really high out of the water and you're out there too long, then your legs will start to sink. But also on the recovery, when you send your hands forward into streamline, if your hands come too high out of the water, then your legs are gonna sink. So really, ideally, you wanna be at the surface level of the water when your hands are coming forward. Whether they go through the water or just above the water, that actually doesn't matter that much. It's key that if you ever watch your stroke from the side profile in slow motion, if you see that your hands are dramatically above the surface of the water, which a lot of swimmers don't realize, how much their hands come out of the water. You'll see a pause a side cross-section uh, analysis of the video, and you'll see the swimmer's hands right here, and the water line is right here. And it doesn't really make any sense, because if your hands are there, that means your legs are gonna be sinking underneath the water. So two areas to pay attention to when it comes to your amplitude of the stroke. Make sure you're not going too high. Now, here's an interesting drill that you can focus on. So this drill is called Streamline on Front, Sloth. Now, when you're doing Streamline Kick Breaststroke, just like you do on your back. You want to have a tight streamline. You want to make sure your knees are narrow and you bring your heels all the way back. Now what you do is you actually do this on the surface of the water, not underneath the water, and you train your body what it's like to float on top of the water. When you need a breath, all you have to do is lift your head up and time it as if you were doing the full-on breaststroke. Just don't use your arms to take a full stroke. So you're training your body to be on top of the water and you're training the timing of the stroke as well, even though you're not doing a pull, of what it's like to be high in the water and not let your legs sag. So definitely an important mistake that a lot of swimmers are making that you don't have to make. Now the fourth biggest mistake that swimmers make is dropping the elbows. Now this is something that's a little bit more difficult to fine tune in my opinion. What we're talking about is that early vertical forearm catch. This is really true in freestyle, butterfly, all the strokes. You wanna make sure you're pulling the water with not just the surface area of your hand, but you're pulling the water with your forearm as well. That's really important because your forearm and your hand and the rest of your arm can hold a lot more water and you can engage a lot more muscles like on your back to pull yourself a lot faster through the water. So here's a great drill to focus on not dropping your elbows and actually pulling the water with these high elbow catch. The first one is called front skull. This is where you're literally flat on top of the water and you're going to have your face looking down and you're actually going to start to skull kind of like you're putting icing on a cake. Now a great way to actually start doing the front skull is when you're treading water. So if you think about how you tread water in the deep end, you're like frosting a cake and you're, you're basically teaching your hands how to connect and build that feel of the water with your pinkies leading the out sweep and then your thumb coming back together, applying pressure at all angles. And so when you go from basically treading water and putting the icing on the cake, then you'll just start to naturally lean forward and you'll apply the same ice cake spreading motion in a vertical orientation. And that's sort of what the breaststroke pull is like. Now a more complicated uh, drill is, is not related to sculling, it's where you actually add resistance and you focus on your pull. So you can add resistance with a parachute, with a bungee cord, a power tower. This is definitely for the more advanced swimmers who have access to this type of equipment. But if you're really trying to focus on your pull specifically, and this is one area of my breaststroke that I personally struggle with, and I find it, for me personally, I get the most value when I train with resistance, and I can basically slow things down and really apply pressure on that part of the pull, and I can really focus on improving my technique in that way. Now the fifth uh, mistake that swimmers are making is swimming slow. Yeah, I know that sounds ridiculous. Well, how do I go faster, coach? I'm gonna tell you how to go faster. The reason why you don't wanna swim breaststroke slow, unlike freestyle, swimming freestyle in warm up, maybe cool down, maybe in a recovery set, it's perfectly okay to swim freestyle 
Nice, chilled, relaxed environment. Breaststroke and his short axis friend, Butterfly, you don't do that. The reason is, when you swim butterfly or, or breaststroke, and it's a short axis stroke, meaning you're pivoting through your, your hips in a forward, backward motion. Think about that amplitude of the, of the sine curve. When you do freestyle and backstroke, you have rotational momentum. It's a long axis stroke. Anyway, when you're doing short axis strokes, butterfly and breaststroke, it's a lot more inefficient if the timing isn't on point. When you do freestyle long axis, you can just slow everything down and the mechanics don't really break down that much. In breaststroke on the other hand, because it's the most inefficient stroke and you ride lowest in the water, you don't wanna train your body with those poor mechanics swimming slow. So a big mistake a lot of swimmers make is they train really long breaststroke with really slow tempo, not realistic to how they actually wanna train, whether or not you wanna go compete in a competition. If you wanna train in, for a competition, 100 breasts, 200 breasts, 50 breasts, 400 IM, yeah, you definitely don't wanna be swimming slow. You wanna be training at a higher intensity, more replicable to your race pace training. Now this isn't, I'm not advocating USRPT specifically. You just wanna be thinking about holding very good stroke mechanics, stroke count, power in each stroke, and making sure you nail the timing pull, kick, glide, where you pause in streamline, not when you take a breath. That's a big mistake that ties this together. Swimming slow, taking a breath for a really long time, and not really executing the stroke correctly. But even if you're not competing in a competition and you just wanna swim breaststroke for leisure, you actually get a better aerobic workout, believe it or not, when you train at a higher intensity because it's a lot harder, actually, to have these mechanics. Pull, kick, glide, hold in the streamline. It's more difficult, it's more tiring. The lazy way out is just doing floater breaststroke. And if that's you, that's perfectly fine. Just know if you wanna take your swimming to the next level, you can get a better workout, more performance if you train at speed. And train your body line to ride high in the water. This is a really important concept. It applies for any type of swimming, any type of sport actually, but this is the most true in breaststroke. And the drill that we're gonna talk about uh, in just a little bit really ties this all together. So a drill that's specific to swimming breaststroke fast and with power, intensity, intention is freestyle kick with a breaststroke pull. So you actually do a flutter kick and you really work on having an explosive high tempo catch out in front. I recommend wearing fins for this. I feel really gassed if I do this without fins. With fins, I also feel really tired, but I'm able to get a little bit more, more propulsion because I am a breaststroke swimmer that has a very strong kick. So if I drop the kick and I go to freestyle kick, which for me is not very strong, Strong, I'm not gonna go very fast. So it, dim it diminishes the drill just a little bit. So make sure for these drills, all of them, you're well rested and you can execute on them in the best way possible. So that is another uh, mistake that a lot of swimmers make is just swimming slow. Gotta get out there, go faster. Now here's a bonus for you guys. Another mistake is not having a plan. Just thinking that you're gonna get better at breaststroke because you watch this video is not enough. You've gotta apply these drills. You gotta have intention. You've gotta follow a workout plan. So if you are, haven't already checked out the My Swim Pro app, make sure you check it out. We have workouts and training plans specific to every type of goal available for iOS and Android. If you train on a team or you already write your own workouts, whatever, that's great too. Make sure you have intention. Don't waste your time. Time is the most important thing that you have. You wanna use it efficiently in the water. If you're training IM, if you're doing drills, if you're doing breaststroke, if you're doing any type of kicking, you wanna make sure you're thinking about these things and actually applying them to your workout, to your training plan, to your weekly progression, so that way you're getting the most out of your time and you're making the progress towards your goals as quickly as possible. Now, I know I alluded to my favorite swimming set that focuses on pretty much everything that we talked about. Now, the, the set that I love in breaststroke is called Countdown Drill. Now, the way this works, you wanna be in a 25 meter or 25 yard pool. The length of the pool doesn't really matter, but the numbers will end up playing into that depending on how long the pool is. So you can do this in a 50 meter pool. You're your numbers are just gonna be a lot bigger. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna count how many strokes you take. Now you can do this with a pull out, so meaning when you push off the wall, you can do an underwater pull out, or you can just push off the wall and just swim breaststroke. Whatever you do, do the same thing on all eight 25. So we're gonna pretend we have a 25 meter pool. And when I do this drill, I like to swim the first 25 all natural, and I just wanna get a good pace in. So I'm not going fast, I'm going a good neutral swimming pace. I'm not swimming slow, <laughs> not swimming slow, but I'm swimming like my normal breaststroke pace. So I normally swim in yards actually, but I go five strokes. 
That's my baseline. Your number might be seven, it might be 12, it might be 15. I hope it's under 15. If it is, that's no problem either. Just make sure you know what your baseline stroke count is. Stroke count's a very important metric for breaststroke. Now on the second 25, you're gonna reduce that by one. So for me, I'm gonna go from five to four. If you were at 12, now you're going to 11. On the third 25, you're gonna reduce it again. And then the fourth 25, you're gonna reduce it by one stroke again. So if you're following along, if you start with five, then on the number second 25, you're gonna go four, and then three strokes, and then two strokes. So after four 25s, you will have reduced your stroke count from five to two, or 12 to eight. Whatever it is, you have to reduce by at least one, and then you're gonna pause, you're gonna reflect, and then you're gonna build back up. And as you build back up, you should be able to swim faster, and it should be easier to think about your timing, pull, kick, glide. A lot of people ask, well, how do I go from five to four to three to two? How do I go from 12 to nine, 12 to eight? It seems pretty dramatic, and it is, and the reason is you have to focus on your timing, the power of the stroke. It's really important to think pull, kick, glide, because if you don't have that pause in streamline, instead you're pausing when you take a breath, the inefficiencies of the stroke are gonna prevent you from gliding and maximizing the distance per stroke. So this countdown drill is really focused on increasing your distance per stroke, increasing your efficiency and your power per stroke. So what's gonna happen on the second half of that, so on 25s number five, six, seven, and eight, as you build up your stroke count and you get back to where you started with, it might actually be difficult to get back to where you started because your stroke is more efficient, more powerful, and you're more warmed up. I often like to do this before I do any type of a main set. I might even do this, uh, a breaststroke main set. I might even do this in a competition. I'll do a couple 25s where I try and manipulate how many strokes I take per length, and that really gets me in tune. And the more experienced you are as a breaststroke swimmer, or individual medley swimmer, or swimmer in general, you should have a pretty good idea how many strokes you take in breaststroke. And if you don't, this is a perfect opportunity to start. So I highly recommend this drill. You can do this for the other strokes, but it really applies well for breaststroke because you can focus on increasing your distance per stroke, and you can also focus on increasing the length of your pullout. So for clarification, if you guys are wondering, how does it only take two strokes? I normally do a pullout. So I'll go five, four, three, two, and I am doing a pullout where I go about 10 to 12 yards underneath the water before I even take my first stroke. And then when we get to two strokes, I might be pushing 15 meters underwater before my head even breaks the surface. And then it, sometimes if you really wanna push it, you use the first 525s to descend another stroke. So for me, I'll go down to one stroke. Maybe for you, you go 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, five or six times, you just count your down and then you build yourself back up. And then when you build yourself back up, if you only do 825s or 10, you might end up with one less than where you started with. If you have a diving block and you're really good at pullouts, maybe you go zero and you don't take any strokes the whole length and you really focus on lengthening out that pullout. It really doesn't matter how many you take so much as you know your number and you know how to manipulate it and increase your distance per stroke, make more power per stroke and make your stroke more efficient. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video about different ways that you can improve your breaststroke by looking at the five most common mistakes swimmers make. I've also made this video for freestyle, backstroke, and butterfly. If you haven't checked out my new book, Swim Like a Pro, make sure you check it out, link down below in the description. And before you leave, if you haven't already joined the global community on Facebook, it is a 100% free group to join. Make sure you check it out, linked in the description below. You'll join thousands of swimmers from over 100 countries who are passionate about taking their swimming to the next level. So that sounds like something you wanna be a part of. Make sure you join that group. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. I wish you the best. Have a great day and happy swimming.